Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Ethan Heinzen. I'm a senior data science analyst at Mayo Clinic, and today I'll be presenting about the Arsenal package. My co-presenters are Beth Atkinson and Jason Sinwell, uh, who will be joining me in the chat. The motivation for this R package uh, stems primarily from our work at Mayo Clinic. Mayo Clinic is a three-site research hospital with a fairly substantial statistical presence. Um, we have over 500 people who are, are doing R, but who are also doing um, statistics. Historically, we've been a SAS shop using SAS for most of our um, data needs and analysis needs. Um, but a recent, recent five years ago, six years ago, a SAS uh, license renegotiation revealed our critical dependency on SAS. Um, that made leadership a little bit uh, wary. So they asked us to um, evaluate how we could reduce our footprint in SAS, which of course naturally led to the question, what's the best way to port those in-house macros and other SAS procedures to R? We started with a, an R package that we called R local, um, which was internal only to Mayo. Now that package contained both private functions for accessing like Mayo data and some public functions. We decided eventually to separate those public functions that we thought might be useful to an external audience into a, a CRAN package. And that's how we arrived at Arsenal. Now the goal of Arsenal is to mimic and improve upon <clears throat> the SAS functionality, but to do so easily. We didn't want a, a large barrier of entry for those people who were moving from SAS to R. We wanted things to feel kind of familiar um, with similar output. The first release of the package uh, came on December 30th, 2016. And we've had a few major releases since then with minor releases every couple months and patches in between. There are six main functions in Arsenal. Um, we're gonna talk about five of them today. <clears throat> the first function is uh, the table by function, which is intended to uh, replace the percent table macro from SAS. Um, percent table is basically used to uh, input a data set and output a, a table one, describing a summary of the data um, of a particular cohort, usually. The paired function is a lot like table by, um, except that it's used to report on paired data. Model sum is a function uh, that replicates uh, the percent model sum macro which was used to fit models over a set of independent variables. Freakless is a function that mimics um, SAS's proc freak procedure uh, to compile a frequency table over a set of variables. Compare DF is a function um, that replicates SAS's uh, compare procedure, which compares two data sets and looks for differences. And finally, the write to family of functions um, it, I, I kind of think of like ODS output, uh, but basically the idea is you just want to output results to a file. <clears throat> Arsenal comes with a, a data set built in called mock study. Mock study represents a traditional medical data set with one row per person, the case variable, and a variety of demographic and clinical information like age, um, sex, the follow-up time on a given study, the arm that the patient is on, et cetera. We'll start with table by. Uh, table by is Arsenal's bread and butter, kind of. Um, the idea here is we want to tabulate the sex and age variables um, across the three different arms in the study. For example, we want to do this to ensure that a particular um, randomization scheme works, or just to make sure that there aren't 
stark differences between the different arms that might explain the difference uh, in a particular uh, model result. So here what we do is we feed a traditional R formula with the bivariable arm on the left-hand side and the variables to be tabulated, the independent variables, on the right-hand side. So we get arm tilde sex plus age, we feed that into table by, and then we summarize it with the summary function. Now, here we're passing the argument text equal true to tell table by that we just want a simple pipe table. Table by, and in fact, all the functions um, which report tables in um, Arsenal use knitter cable as the table generating engine. Now, of course, the pipe table, um, I think at least is a little ugly. So if we omit that text equal true and render to a PDF like the slides I have here, we get this really nice looking attractive table here. Now, one thing you'll notice with table by is that the categorical variables here, um, sex, is, they're treated differently from, for example, the numeric variables, um, age in this table. Table by uh, has, well, at least we think, uh, meaningful defaults to uh, treat all the different data types separately. Um, table by supports natively um, categoricals, which we call uh, character, logical, and factors. Numerics, ordered factors, survival objects, dates, and also results from um, the arsenal select all function. Now, the most common requests that people usually get for tables is, uh, hey, can I change the labels on this table? Or even, can I change which summary statistics are in there? Maybe you want median instead of mean. Uh, or maybe even, can I change the statistical test? Or even uh, my favorite, which is, uh, can you show fewer significant digits on that number? All of those things are very easily accomplished in Arsenal with table by. Uh, there are th a few different ways to set labels uh, and summary statistics, uh, p-value tests and decimal points can all be controlled um, using table by dot control or inline as we'll see on the next page. <clears throat> so here's an example call to modify the table slightly. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that we're putting uh, the variable sex inside the function FE. FE stands for Fisher's exact test. And so what we're telling table by here is we wanna use Fisher's exact on the sex variable instead of the default chi-square. We then pass digits.percent to indicate that we don't want any trailing digits uh, on the percentages. Second, for the age variable, we surround that with no test, which means we don't want a p-value for that um, variable. We also only want one digit as opposed to the default, which is three, as you can see here. Finally, we're changing the summary statistics by passing unnamed arguments that match function names, uh, here, median and Q1, Q3, to indicate that we want the median and the first and third quartile instead of the default uh, mean standard deviation. Lastly, when we summarize the table, we also include p footnote equal true to indicate that we want a footnote indicating the statistical test that was run. Table by also works without uh, a by variable. And the default here is just to um, summarize the overall data set. Table by also allows you to stratify subset and summarize multiple endpoints. Um, in this example, what we're doing is we're passing list of arm and sex to table by on the left-hand side to indicate that we want to uh, tabulate both of those by variables um, by the same factors on the right-hand side. Now we also indicate strata equals PS to indicate that we want to separately tabulate um, the statistical summaries for each of the levels in the PS variable. We've also subsetted to only those uh, values that PS takes on that are zero or one. 
And so in the, in the output here, you can see on the, the top table across the top is the arm variable. And on the bottom table across the top is the sex variable. We've separated summaries for PS equals zero and PS equals one. Now, there are a lot of other features for table by that we didn't have time to talk about today, um, including a as.dataframe method for both the table by object and its summary object. Uh, there are ways to subset variables, change the order of the variables, and delete variables using the bracket, head, or tail. Um, you can sort and filter by p-values. You can merge two tables together. And you can also input custom p-values and um, indicate custom user statistics. The next function I want to talk about is the model sum function. The model sum function um, basically it runs separate models for various independent variables um, across the same endpoint. So here what we're doing is we're going to model both the alkaline phosphatase as a function of ARM and alkaline phosphatase as a function of PS. And so you do that by, again, using the formula interface with the outcome variable on the left-hand side and the separate independent variables on the right-hand side. Now, what you'll see in the bottom table is two separate models um, each with their own intercept with the main effects in bold. And then a variety of summaries uh, for each of those two models, including the estimate, the point estimate, the standard error of that point estimate, um, the p-value, and some model level summaries like the adjusted R squared and the number of missing observations in the model. Now you might want to add common adjusters to both of those models. Uh, here, what we're doing is we're passing sex and age as the adjuster variables as a one-sided formula. Both of these two models then uh, include uh, sex and age in their model. Now that table gets uh, kind of gets to be kind of a lot to look at, and so you might want to hide those common adjusters and even the intercepts. You can do both of those using uh, arguments to um, the summary function, show.adjust equal false and show.intercept equal false. As with table by, there are lots of other options. Um, you can change the model family to be Poisson, binomial, a survival model, et cetera. Um, you can change the labels, the decimal places, the summary statistics. You can convert it to a data frame. Um, and you can also subset variables, uh, change their order, delete them, and merge two tables. The third function I want to talk about is the freak list function. Freak list, as you'll remember, mimics SAS's proc freak procedure, basically to output a frequency table. Here we're passing a um, one-sided formula to tabulate sex and arm and PS. And the default here looks a lot like SAS's proc freak procedure. The variables are on the left, the frequency is the next um, column, and then the last three are the cumulative frequency, the percentage of the total, and the cumulative percentage of the total. Now, just like the uh, X tabs function, you can also pass a left-hand side to this formula to indicate case weights for each observation. One neat trick with freak list is that you can sort the table by frequency um, using the sort function. Now, the default doesn't uh, duplicate labels. As you can see here, the male label is only reported once for the whole column, and everything below it is uh, assumed to take on that same value. Uh, one, the argument to disable that is the dupe labels argument, which here, when we sort the table, we want to be true so that we can see um, as we've sorted the table, which uh, exactly which levels of each variable this frequency count represent. Uh, just like the other two functions, with freak list, you can coerce to a data frame, you can change the labels, subset variables, and merge two tables together. The next function I want to talk about is the compare df function. Compare df compares two different data frames to look for differences. Um, here, you can see we're using the function muck up mock study 
which basically changes some variable names, deletes some observations, and edits some data. When we run compare DF, uh, comparing mock study to mock study two, um, we want to we want to compare those rows that we would expect to match up. Here, we're expecting rows which match by the case variable, which you'll remember is the participant ID. We expect those to match up. The print method gives a fairly decent summary of what's going on in the comparison. You can see that there are nine uh, non-by variables that are shared and 1495 observations. But there are seven variables that aren't shared between the two uh, data sets and four observations which appear in one but not the other. You can see that there are differences found in three of the seven variables that are compared and three variables compared have non-identical attributes. The summary function gives a more robust output um, but is too long to include on this slide. You can also change the tolerances of the compare df function. For example, you might want integers to be treated as numeric so that they can compare or factors to be coerced to characters so that they can compare with character variables. Um, or you might want to compare variables which only differ by the case. Here you can see that we've um, eliminated some of our not shared variables and increased the number of shared variables. There are extractor functions to um, allow you to see what the differences are, as you can see here. Finally, we'll look at the write to function. The idea with write to is that you want to just output data to a document. There are three main functions to do that write to Word, write to PDF, and write to HTML. However, the write to function itself supports other output formats that are also supported by R Markdown. Up here, you can see we're passing a variety of objects to a list that we want to write to a PDF, including the table by object, um, a linear model summary, some raw LaTeX code, a level one heading, the model sum object, and a code chunk that we want to be evaluated. The output looks a lot like this. We have our table by object. We have the results of the linear model. And then we have the model sum table after a new page that raw LaTeX and the level one heading and the code chunk that gets evaluated. Finally, here are some resources, including docs pages, the issues page, uh, a link to this presentation, and all of our GitHub handles that you can connect with us on GitHub. Thank you.